Hi, this is Barb Kraft, Director of Admissions for Wharton San Francisco. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to get started in just a few moments. So feel free to post your questions throughout the webinar and we'll be answering them at the end. We're anxious to get started here. Thank you for joining us. As I mentioned, I'm Barb Kraft, Director of Admissions for Wharton San Francisco and with me is Peggy Bishop Lane and Diane Sharp. Hi everyone, I'm Diane Sharp, Director of Admissions for the Philadelphia MBA Program for Executives. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Peggy Bishop Lane. I'm the Vice Dean for the MBA Program for Executives in both Philadelphia and San Francisco and I'm really pleased to be joining and talking with you all today. Let me start us out by talking about why Wharton requires standardized tests. And it's pretty straightforward. There's really one primary reason, which is that we want to ensure that all of our students are capable of being successful in the program. A lot of times we'll have more information to assess you, but sometimes that information is a little bit older and a standardized test can give us some more recent information. For a lot of you, that's a really helpful thing. If your transcript is old and you were a really different person 10 or 20 years ago when that transcript reflects your academic aptitude, and taking a test today or a year or so ago gives us a sense of kind of who you are today and, and how capable you are today. It also gives us a uniform way of assessing you. Um, if you think about transcripts across universities, grades can have really different meanings. And so when we're looking at standardized test results, we know exactly what that score means. Um, a secondary reason, not certainly not the main uh, goal of a standardized test, but something that we find can be really useful is that uh, studying for the standardized test and taking that test is really good preparation for what you're gonna go through in our program, because you're gonna be doing a lot of studying and, and some taking of tests. And so um, whether or not you're taking the GMAT, the GRE, or the executive assessment, um, we think that that's gonna be a big benefit for you, and it's also gonna let us know um, how ready you are for the program. Great. Um, so what tests do we accept? There are three out there that Wharton does accept, the Executive MBA program at Wharton. First and foremost is the GMAT. I'm sure you're all aware that it is the tried and true test for graduate business education. Um, Wharton, both our full-time and executive programs, we've been taking it um, basically since our inception. So that is a good one. And as Peggy said, it gives you really good practice on um, getting you know, the mindset of studying and taking the test. And we know what the results of that GMAT means versus um, how prepared you would be for, for our program. We also accept the GRE. Um, that test has also been out there for a while and our full-time MBA program does accept that as well. So it has uh, a lot of data behind it. Some people, if you have a preference for the GRE, um, you're more than welcome to take that and submit your GRE score. The third test and the newest is the executive assessment test. Um, at Wharton, we are piloting that test. Um, and of course, our full-time program, our MBA program would not accept it since it is designed for executive programs only. We do still have a pilot going with this because there's really just not enough data out there to understand what the results of this test would mean um, as people go through the program. So at Wharton, we are going to require you to require you to have at least 10 years of work experience in order to take the executive assessment and submit the score to us. Again, because it is designed for executives. Um, the all of these tests are valid for five years. Um, so we want you to um, Take them when you feel ready, and then you might not be ready for business school right away, but it'll still be, be valid. 
Um, and a, a very popular question we get year in, year out is, would we waive a test? Do you have to take a standardized test? And the answer is we do not waive. Everyone needs to take one of these tests. And if you're not sure which one, you'll see later in this uh, webinar opportunities how to get some information about which one. If you're just joining us, feel free to post your questions throughout the webinar. We'll get to as many of those as we can when we're finished. So how does Wharton and the Admissions Committee use test res results in evaluating candidates? Um, at the Wharton School, we take a very holistic approach to our applications and to the people applying. And what we do is when it comes to the standardized test, we're going to look at your test scores relative to your other academics. So we ask that you submit official transcripts of all prior academic work, undergraduate, graduate, even our, those who have PhDs are required to take a standardized test. And we're going to look at those tests relative to your transcripts. We're not going to be looking at your transcripts just to see that you actually graduated, but we're going to look at the competitiveness of the academic institution that you attend and the coursework. So for instance, our liberal arts graduates, we're going to be looking, we may not see a lot of quantitative courses there. So we're going to be looking closely at their performance on their standardized tests in the quant areas. And it can really be for many people, as Peggy mentioned, it could be a redeeming factor for them, the standardized test that they've taken if they didn't perform as well as they had hoped during undergraduate. And again, this is very holistic and it gives us the opportunity to see where there may be any gaps and to advise applicants in those areas. Uh, we're also going to look closely at someone's work experience, their career progression, essays, letters of recommendation, and also sponsorship. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more about how we use the tests, especially versus each of them. Um, we're really comfortable with the GMAT because we've been using it in our program for a really long time. So we understand how those scores relate to performance in our program and how they relate to somebody's prior academic experience, et cetera. Um, so in, in a lot of ways, we prefer the GMAT just because we know what it means for, for our candidates. Um, that said, the GRE has a lot of history um, and data, and they, they do provide us with tables that allow us to move from a GRE score to a GMAT score. Um, so we can use those to also understand what the GRE scores mean in terms of being successful in the program. For the executive assessment right now, it's a little bit harder for us to make those kinds of judgments just because there's not enough data out there, as Diane said. Um, part of why we're in the pilot program with GMAC is that we want to help them develop the data along with the other pilot schools. And so um, we are, as Diane said, interested and happy to have you take that test if you've been out of school for a while. Um, but it does make it a little bit more difficult for us to know what that score means. And so um, we might be relying a little bit more heavily in those cases on somebody's transcript or work experience um, when we're looking at those scores. But I, I just want to reiterate that when whatever test you're taking, um, doing preparation is so important. And don't be misled by what you might see on the GMAC site for the executive assessment where they tell you you can just jump in and take this test. Frankly, you can just jump in and take any test, um, but the more you study, the better you're going to do, and that's true for the EA as well. One important thing to note with the EA is that you can only take it twice, and so um, doing it without any prep um, is potentially dangerous if you want to take it multiple times. And we will take your best score. Uh, that's a question that we receive often is, you know, how often can I take the test for the GMAT? It's once every 16 days, and we will take the best score that you have. We do not combine scores, but we'll take your best score, and we like those exams to be taken within the last five years. Yeah, as um, Peggy mentioned too, you'll see on the websites, the test prep sites say, this is how long you should study for this test or the other test. Um, on average, this is what people are studying and getting solid scores. Um, but 
you want more than your average or solid score to apply to Wharton. You want to go above and beyond what you read there. You're going to need to put in the work now to prove to us that you can put in the work later. So uh, the first question I saw was, um, are you penalized or at a disadvantage if you take the EA versus the other two tests? So I wouldn't put it as a disadvantage. If you've been cleared to take it, you've had that 10 years work experience, um, you'll want to have that conversation with us first. Um, the only way you'd be at a disadvantage is if you did not put in the time to study to show that you are getting a very strong result. And I think studying for any of these standardized tests is a great dress rehearsal for what's to come. It's a good opportunity to start figuring out where are you going to carve out that kind of time. Um, I assure you it'll be the least amount of studying you will do if admitted to the program. <laughs> All right, and thanks. You guys are posting a lot of questions, and I'm going to introduce Alicia Rogers, who is going to read those questions aloud so everybody knows what we're addressing, and then the three of us will jump in there and respond. Great. The first question I have here is, do you have a minimum or preferred quant score slash percentile for GMAT? So there is no cutoff, per se. What uh, we do is we see your quantitative multiple choice score, we'll see your integrated reasoning score, those are those quantitative sections, and we're going to have your transcripts. So it's not just a standalone number. It is a combination of the above. It could say we, you have, we see you have the foundation from your undergraduate studies, and maybe you didn't hit the mark in the test. Um, that means there's more rust than you thought. Or maybe we don't see the foundation in your undergraduate studies and you don't hit the mark. Then we know you need actual coursework. So um, that is where we would like to actually encourage you to get that kind of feedback before you go out there and take a test. You'll see at the end of this webinar the opportunity to schedule a chat. And if you're applying to West or, uh, or East, it'll be asked on the forum and we will get in touch with you to spend some time to talk about what strategy to do and then if you have questions about which che uh, which test to take so take advantage of that we don't want you to take an exam get a score submit your application when if you had spoken with us a few months prior we could have given you some information that would and feedback we can give you feedback the day after you take the test and let you know if it's going to be a competitive score and if there's still time to retake it all right, so so again, it's not just one number. It's going to be one number for one person and something else for somebody else entirely different. And I think, it, Diane, just to jump in, that that's why it's important, too, that you take these exams early enough that if you do need to retake them early enough to get the feedback and take steps and measures to improve your score if needed. Um, our application deadlines are December the 5th this year and February the 6th. So give yourself a little bit of runway that if you do need to retake the test that you still have the time to do it because we do expect applications to be 100% complete by those deadlines. Um, there's one question up there. I'll just go ahead and speak to it. I think people are wondering if they need to take the GMAT or the GRE and the executive assessment, but it's one test, either the GMAT or the GRE or the executive assessment. And again, we can give you information on which might be best to, to prove your case, um, given that you know the EA, you have to have at least 10 years work experience. And we have links to each of those tests on our website. So take a look at them all and see which one is right for you. Do some practice problems, get a good sense of the various sections, and see if it's a good fit. Great. This I have another question here. What is the difference between a GMAT and an executive assessment? Specifically, what do each test evaluate and where can I get this information? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, the GMAT is first and foremost a longer test and a more involved test than the executive assessment. Um, it therefore is able to discern um, scores better than the executive assessment just because it, it has more data in itself. Um, you'll see on the GMAT that there's a verbal, a quant, an integrated reasoning, and also a, a writing portion of the exam. With the executive assessment, there is no writing portion, so it's just the other three. Um, the other uh, difference about those two exams is actually the, the technology behind how they're graded. 
So um, the GMAT exam is graded um, based on how you're doing in each section. So conditional on your earlier answers, you get harder or easier questions as you go on in the quant, in the verbal, and in the integrated reasoning section. Because it's a shorter exam, the executive assessment can't really work that way. Um, and so what you do is you take the integrated reasoning section, and then your score there keys to whether you're getting more difficult or easier questions in the quant and verbal sections. So, but that's more of a techno technology issue that GMAC is, uh, is working with. Great. Another question to clarify the five years um, for the cutoff date. Does a program accept test scores taken within five years of applying or within five years of starting the program? In other words, is there a cutoff date for when the program will no longer accept scores before a certain date? It's primarily within five years of starting the program. If you have question, you're right on the cusp, you have a very strong score, that's where a fun chat really comes into play. Um, talk to us. Uh, we like to see and evaluate your academics and have that discussion before you decide on your own whether you should be running off and retaking it again. Great. How much does the admissions look at the integrated reasoning and writing scores in the overall GMAT score? We take into consideration all sections of the GMAT. Um, they're all important. Don't take any of them lightly on any of these standardized tests. You should be doing some rehearsal. You should be doing lots of studying and should be taking all very seriously. And uh, again, if you aren't coming from a quantitative background, if we're not going to see a lot of quant in your transcripts, this is an opportunity for you to really demonstrate that you do have the quantitative chops to be successful in the program. And that's really what all of these majors are about, is us making sure that you have the tools and the skills and the innate ability necessary to be successful in the program. And if there are gaps there that we can identify early on, hopefully we can help you to fill those in and for a successful admission. Um, one person did have a question um, and I just wanted to address it in that our program starts in the spring. They were cutting off their date of fall of 2019. Um, just so you know, the executive MBA program has a different start date. So whether you have nine and a half years or 10 years and what tests to take, again, you will want to talk with us so we know. Um, one thing with the executive assessment, if you take it now and then you hit 10 years of work experience a couple years down the line, the test score may be valid. Um, you took it when you were less experienced. It's a pilot for us. Um, you can't assume that we're still going to be accepting it anyway. Why would you choose GMAT versus GRE versus executive assessment? Are certain skills, backgrounds, capabilities best for spe a specific test? I'll, I'll take that. Um, this is really just my personal opinion. Um, but in my, in my mind, the GMAT was designed as a test for business school. So if you want to go to business school, um, you should probably lean toward the GMAT. Um, if you already have taken the GRE for some other program, or um, I know our, our full-time MBA program accepts the GRE because sometimes people aren't sure which kind of graduate program they want to go to. And then the GRE is, is more widely accepted amongst different programs. So you might want to take that one. Um, and then as we've been stressing, the executive assessment is probably more appropriate if you've been out of formal schooling for a long time. Um, it's, it's just kind of whittling down some of the detailed types of uh, verbal and quantitative questions um, and making it a little bit more accessible. Would it hurt my application if I take the GMAT multiple times or does admissions only look at the highest score? We look at the highest score. Um, that said, we don't we don't want you to be a GMAT junkie. Uh, we would like you to take it. Uh, we do see that people take it more than once, oftentimes. But if you're taking it more than once, I would say step back, reflect, 
see what kind of increase you need to make and take the time to prepare. So don't just take it and take it again and take it again with hopes of improving, but take it thoughtfully and really spend that time in between exams. But typically we don't see many more than you know two, two times perhaps on, on the GMAT. When we start seeing someone taking it, six, seven, eight times, um, we honestly don't see a, a much of an increase in a score and sometimes actually a decrease. Can you recommend test prep materials or websites? Yeah, we get this question a lot. Um, over the course of uh, our experiences in this industry, we have been exposed to a lot of different test prep agencies. Now a lot of it's online, there's tutors. So we know we can't just recommend one because each of you has a different prep style um, method. You might be one-on-one, -on -one, you know, best that way. You might be okay in a class. So we always recommend talking to people you know who've done it. Um, talk to your friends who've been successful in studying and get their advice. Go to a, you know, a named uh, institution that does this, a named organization you don't want to, there's probably a lot of fly-by-night stuff out there. Um, part of the chat that we can have with you, if you know you are very interested in moving forward with an application, um, you could, you know, we could learn about you and you could submit a, an unofficial copy of your transcript and your resume before we have our chat. So as we get to know you better um, and we know how far along in the prep process and how rusty you are, um, there could be a little more specific advice, but again, we don't point to a place and say, this is where you need to prep. That said, there are definitely some free online, you know, prep resources out there available, and that's kind of a good place to start is just where, where there are no cost and you can get some real good practice problems. Khan Academy in particular has a free online entire section about the GMAT with practice problems and math review. Great, so I think we're hitting a lot of the topics. I know some of you had questions um, related to other items about applying and the program itself. So we're just keeping this to the test topic um, and we can get back to you offline uh, to answer your other questions. But if you have any test related questions left, please post them now. I think in general, it's never too early to get started. I think you've probably gotten that message from us and to check in with us um, as Barb and I put up our schedules to, to go on the road and, and do events throughout the United States and Canada. We will uh, want to have you, you know, get more information about the program and the testing subject is always going to be one that, that we cover everywhere. Yeah, thank you. And, and Definitely visit our website often because you'll start seeing events being posted of where we are and cities near you. So keep visiting us. Look at our blog stories out there. You'll get some tips from some of our current students or alumni on their application journey. Great. And I have another question here. Which would weigh more heavily regarding a candidacy factor? Have an OK preferred GMAT score or having an excellent GRE score? So that kind of can be a, a big range, an OK GMAT score. But if you're feeling your GRE score is excellent, it sounds like you already know you've got this excellent score, um, that, that should be fine. Again, let's, let's talk. Let's uh, get your transcript and discuss it. I, I think, though, if you, if you think about the extremes, if you, know, you have an 800 or the equivalent on your GRE, that's that's great. You should submit that. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we're gonna. It doesn't come down just to test score. Right. So we're gonna again take a holistic approach to that application. And if you have a great GRE score, I would say focus on the other aspects of your application to get it in. Yeah. Don't spend that kind of time on a on a on a different test because you've got the test aspect of the application pretty well uh, established. I am a physician and also have a master's degree. For both the MD and subsequent MPH, I was able to use my MCAT score for the applications. Does this exam count towards graduate admissions test or must we take the GRE slash GMAT? 
you will need to take GMAT, GRE, or EA, depending on your level of work experience, but sorry, the MCAT will not qualify for business school. Um, we, add, we don't waive it in any case, uh, the GRE, GMAT, or EA. That would be true for the LSAT too. That one's not gonna count either. Exactly. Um, one person has asked if we have similar weight to the different tests, the GRE and the GMAT, um, why don't we report our average GRE? Um, we actually do not get enough people applying to our program using the GRE to be able to give a statistically relevant average. The Wharton professors here know stats, and they know stats uh, <laughs> are valid and such. So I think we're, we're winding down now. A couple people have asked about how do you schedule a chat, and there is a form. You're going to see actually a, a link to that on the, the last slide, but you can also see it on our website. Um, it's best to do it that way because if you just call the office, we may or may not be available. So this way we can get something on the on the calendar, yours calendar and Barb's calendar and my calendar and, and the rest of the admissions committee. And we'll really be able to set up a nice uh, solid 15 minutes to, to give you some input. Great, well, thank you. We really appreciate you tuning in today with us. We hope to speak with you soon and wish you the best in all of your academic endeavors and look forward to seeing you at the Wharton School. Have a great day.